Welcome to Carnalitas tutorial. In this chapter we're going to focus on the GLSL shaders, which is a way to render our characters and our environment in real time, either in the 3D view or in the Blender game engine as well. GLSL stands for OpenGL Shading Language, by the way. So first we need a material, of course. Add a new material, then select all the meshes quickly by doing Shift G, objects of same type. And now Control L to link these materials there. Okay. Now all of them are sharing the same material, I think. Yep. I just want to use only one material for all of them now. I will make local materials la later, but now I just want to use only one. Focus on only one. So go to texture view or Alt Z. Then start the game engine, and yeah, it looks dark. That's because GLSL actually behaves like in the when rendering. So if we don't have light, then we won't see anything. Which kind of makes sense, right? So we add one lamp, and now it looks a little bit better. Still a bit ugly the material, yeah. So let's. Now let's just remove this ugly specular, let's change to some nice shader there. I like Corinaya because it's a, a really nice smooth uh, diffuse shader. Okay, nice enough, let's play with the colors. And yeah, it's still too dark from the back. If I was doing rendering here, I will just put another light there and that's it. Or I will just change it to an Emmy so I have more constant uh, light from the back. But in the real time, the more lights you have, the lights are dynamic, right? So the more lights you have, the more expensive it is for the computer to calculate this. So we can avoid this by faking, of course. CG is about faking. so. We will fake how the uh, how this material gets affected by the light, either the light parts, the lit parts, or the or the dark parts of it. So we control this with a uh, color ramp from the ramps panel on the materials. If we play with the default values there and the default color band we have there, we can see that we can control the light part of our uh, material. But if we change the other part, the dark part, to for example white, we still see black there. Because we are not controlling actually how the dark parts look, just the shading until getting dark. But we can control that by changing the input type of this color ramp from shader, which is the default, to result. So now we're controlling actually how the final shader will look. Even, even the, the dark part of it, as you can see. I put a gray there, so no matter if it's, there is no light at all, it will never get dark, it will, nev you know, it will never get uh, totally black, like by default. You will get, it will shade all the way to this, uh, color, which is nice actually. Yeah, it, it's not really realistic and it doesn't really look nice when a uh, material fades to black. Not all the materials fade to black, so. And uh, even less on uh, cartoon characters. So this is a nice way to, to fake this. And you have a lot more control on, on the colors actually. But you still you see that it still responds to the light, so to the direction of the light. So if you move the light around, it will still uh, make sense where the light's coming. It's nice as well. So yeah, yeah, you can see there. So yeah, you can spend hours playing with these colors, like I'm doing now.
Now I'm using mix as a method for this color ramp. So I'm just using the colors on the color ramp. But I could change this. I could use the color from the material and put this color band on top of it by changing the method type to, uh, for example, add or overlay or multiply or any other kind. I will show you now. For example, add will add the color band to the base color of my material. So if I had some orange-ish color on my material and I put this color band on top of it, then I will get the result of both. That's nice if we have a, a, a texture and uh, we don't want to lose it, of course. So this is one a really old render from 2000 four I think. Jeez, that's old. I feel old. This is Carnarito in 2004, it's a render. And uh, I'm trying to match the colors here, but I'm missing something here, the fall off effect. That nice border it has on the on the edges. Nice uh, white edges. So since procedural texture doesn't work in the in GLSL, I will do it in real time. In a normal render, I will just use a blend texture, a procedural texture. But in GLSL, we could fake this by just making an image that looks like a uh, like a radial blend texture, and you can see that the result is exactly the same. but we are using a, a, an image for that instead of a procedural texture. Okay, it's fake, I know, but looks nice. So, okay, let's add a sensor control and actuator for having it rotating so you can see the effect of uh, along the normals. Nice. So we got sort of uh, with missing some emit. Ah, uh, it looks a lot better. So let's move to the lamps now. 